Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral Church of All Saints, April the 10th, Palm Sunday. Along with our 10 a.m. service today, this evening we will enter into a series of worship services that will span all of Holy Week. This evening at 4 p.m., a service of readings and music for choir and congregation. Monday evening, a Book of Common Prayer Eucharist at 7 p.m. Tuesday, the Great Litany with Choir, again at 7 p.m. Wednesday at 7.30 a.m., our weekly Eucharist service. Then at 7 p.m., Reflections on the Stations of the Cross here in the Cathedral. And at 9 p.m., the Ancient Service of Tenebrae. Thursday, a 7 p.m. Eucharist with foot washing and the stripping of the altar. Good Friday, a service at noon, music, prayer, and reflections on the cross. Then on Holy Saturday, a time of meditation will be observed at 11 a.m., focusing on the transition from Good Friday to Easter. And in the evening at 7 p.m., the Easter vigil with the lighting of the first fire, renewal of baptismal vows, a baptism and confirmation, and the first Eucharist of Easter. Our Bishop Sandra Feiss will be here to preside. This year on Easter morning, we'll have our first Easter sunrise service. We will begin at 6.15 outside as we retell in scripture and story the discovery of the empty tomb at first light. We will then proceed into the cathedral for Eucharist. Now there is a tradition in many parts of the Christian world for the ringing of bells on Easter day to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. As most of you may know, the cathedral was to have a six-story bell tower right above me, above the transept, which has yet to be built. So we have no bell to ring at the cathedral. So if you come at 6.15, bring along a handbell or some other bells to ring as we process into the cathedral to the singing of great hymns of Alleluia. Following the service, we'll gather in the great hall for potluck breakfast, coffee, tea, and juice will be provided. On Easter morning at 10 a.m., our service will see a return to the jazz Easter music we all enjoyed in pre-COVID times. There will be Sunday school that morning and an Easter egg hunt will follow the service. Again, just a reminder that with the lifting of gathering size restrictions, pre-registering is no longer required. However, we do encourage the wearing of masks as a simple preventative measure. We continue with great care and caution here as COVID cases continue to rise in the province. If you wish to make a memorial donation for Easter flowers, please get in touch with Sarah at the Cathedral office. Tomorrow would be the deadline to ensure inclusion in the bulletin. You'll find the complete list of upcoming services throughout Holy Week on the Cathedral's website. And if you do not as yet receive it, please contact the Cathedral office to be placed on the Cathedral Happenings an email newsletter mailing list that goes out. Don't forget you can find us online daily Monday through Saturday for morning prayer services which are uploaded at 6.30 a.m. A Thursday evening meditation group meets via Zoom at 6.30 p.m. To connect, send an email to prayasyoucan3 at gmail.com. The urgent need to provide emergency relief for those displaced by the war in Ukraine continues as a priority. You can contribute most expeditiously by going to the Primates World Relief and Development Fund at www.pwrdf.org. Good news on the search for an apartment for our soon to arrive new Canadian resident, Moham Alassab. An apartment has been secured on Bland Street here in Halifax. His arrival is slated for April 22nd. Coming up at the end of April, are you more than ready for some live music? Do you feel more comfortable gathering in a large space? Imagine the majestic Cathedral Church of All Saints Halifax with its spectacular acoustics. This is where the jazz, jazz ensemble Standard Time will be playing their first live concert of 2022. The Cathedral Church of All Saints presents All About Love, Saturday, April 30th, 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30. Tickets are $20 and can be reserved on Eventbrite. Go to Eventbrite Halifax, you'll find the link on their calendar page. This is a benefit for Alzheimer's research. Tickets may also be purchased at the door by cash or by check. And a final reminder that the annual meeting for the Cathedral Church of All Saints will be held here in the cathedral following the service on the 27th of the month.
Houston and in digital, digital space, we stand on ground that is the ancestral territory of people who were here long before the European settlers crossed the ocean. Located on the unceded with palm giving suffering and death today we greet him as our king although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross we follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. And we pray together. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed, and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silenced, the stones would shout out more. 
the Gospel of Christ. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. Bless now these palms in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May we also go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in tender love for all our human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take our flesh and to suffer death upon a cruel cross. May we follow the example of his great humility and share in the glory of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. There are two occasions in the church year when it seems to me a sermon is superfluous or unnecessary because the liturgy itself tells the story profoundly and sometimes I think words just get in the way. One of them is Monday Thursday when we observe the last gathering of Jesus with his disciples and as part of that Eucharist liturgy the priest or celebrant gets down on his or her knees and bathes the feet of parishioners. The second is this day, when within the scope of an hour we begin with some degree of hectic confusion, great joy in our singing, and celebrate Eucharist together, and then end in sobering silence. Having said that there are two occasions when one doesn't need to preach, I'll keep this short. We begin today with the telling of the last journey Jesus makes into the city of Jerusalem. In Luke's account, Jesus says to two of his disciples, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. Jesus knows what they don't know, what you and I do know, that the end is coming, that Jesus has foreknowledge and has made preparations for the week that is about to unfold, the last week of his life. And so they approach the city, a city swelled to bursting, tens of thousands jammed together, as many as 150,000 historians tell us in a city which normally houses 30,000. They have come from across the countryside in pilgrimage to celebrate the great Passover, God's tremendous act of liberation that in their ancestors' time had released them from lives of slavery in a foreign land. And now once again they yearn for liberation from a foreign land who occupies their home. And as Jesus clips clops his way into the city on that purloined colt, the crowds begin tearing up grass to wave as banners to carpet his path. Luke says the multitude began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And so that is how we begin today. We start with the gospel reading that sets the stage for the events that will unfold in the week to come. But the rubrics or instructions for this Sunday also call upon us to read a second gospel a long gospel story which tells the entire story of the week we call Holy Week, a week which will reveal betrayal, rejection, desertion, trial, and death upon a cross. The thinking being that if we leave this Sunday without the cross in plain view, we cannot fully appreciate the miracle of the resurrection we'll celebrate when we gather here next Sunday. The joy that has Jerusalem bursting at the seams today, shouting out hosannas, is born out of a long history of disappointment and pain. Generation upon generation who have longed for God's intervention 
in a story that has all gone wrong. Life as they know it is not how it was or is supposed to be. It is the contrast, what was and what is, that makes the possibility of a different future even thinkable. One of the challenges we face in hearing this story in two parts is that we already know the outcome. There is no need for a spoiler alert here. You and I already know they will find an empty tomb next week. But the characters in today's gospel do not. That is what makes the events that unfold over this coming week we call holy so startling, and why the cross of execution on that hill far away, which begins to come into clearer focus with each passing day, seems so unthinkable. God wouldn't build up our hopes this way, only to have those hopes dashed. But I bet your own life has had moments like that too, hasn't it? For joy and sorrow often go hand in hand. Happy beginnings full of hope, journeys taken in faith, only to encounter twists and turns we never saw coming. The past two years have certainly underscored that for all of us. The continuing destruction of the peoples and landscape of Ukraine are grim reminders of how quickly life can pivot from joy to sorrow. And where is God? Where is God in the story that will unfold in the scriptures this week? Where is the God we so often convince ourselves will look after us, keep us comfortable and safe? Haven't we been taught to believe that if we live decent lives, don't step too far out of line, that God will smile upon us? Even if we aren't overly religious, bad things don't happen to good people, do they? Well, they do. And good things happen to bad people. You've sometimes noticed, I'm sure. So what does that do to what we thought was faith? That's the sole wrestling question that the disciples faced and that we still face. But that's just it. God is there, that's the curious thing we may overlook in the story that is to come. Our focus will be drawn to the cast of characters that will take center stage this week. Judas, who will betray him. Peter, his trusted friend, who will find his courage failing in the moment it matters most. Pilate, Caiaphas, Herod, the religious and the government leaders set on his elimination as an institutional liability, a political threat. And the crowds that cheer his coming today will turn against their own. But there are also those that have the courage to rise amid the challenge, who will poke holes of compassion, love, and light in the darkness that seems all-encompassing. Mary, who anoints him with precious oil and her tears, Simon of Cyrene that will lift the crossbar from Jesus' shoulders. The women who will gather on the hill to keep vigil. The one being crucified with him who proclaims Jesus' innocence. A soldier whose heart is moved to understand that this is the Son of God. Joseph of Arimathea who will claim his body. Pilate who will grant him permission to do so and Nicodemus who will bring the burial cloth and traditional spices and help Joseph carry him to his resting place. Compassion amid the cruelty and chaos. There, even in the valley of the shadow of death, God is. And that's worth remembering. There may be deep shadows of unknowing in the days to come, but if this week tells us anything worth holding on to, even in the present moment of our lives, it is that God never leaves us solely to ourselves. God comes to us in those we encounter along our journey, and God weaves hope into the very fabric of life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we share together now in an affirmation of our faith. We confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Church of North India. In our own diocese, we pray for the parish of Seaforth, the Reverend Evelyn Knorr, and the Reverend Fred Granger, associate parish priest. We also pray for Linda, our primate, Sandra, our bishop, for Paul, our rector and dean, Helen, our associate priest, our deacons, Ray, Heather, and Maggie, and Debbie, our student, Jillian, our engagement leader, our associated parish of St. James here in Cove, Paul, Nick, and Russ, and Pauline, and Peter, and all who make music here, and, and who minister in this place, both lay and ordained. And with confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy for the mission of our church and the church universal throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord. Lord. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, Lord. Lord. For those who are preparing for baptism and their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Have mercy for peace in our world, remembering especially the conflict in Ukraine and Russia and the victims of the family of the shootings that have happened here in Halifax and Dartmouth in the past few weeks. <clears throat> that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among people and nation, we pray to you, Lord. Lord. For our poor, persecuted, sick, all who are suffering, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, remembering especially those we've been asked to pray for, Sam, Jane, Bob, Maya, Ed and Patricia, David, Douglas, Ian, Barbara, Diana, Charlotte, Anne and Raphael, Susan, Suzanne, Mary, Leanne, Marianne, Richard, Barb and Denny, Marie, Lori, Hilary, Maria, and Amy. That they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. For grace to amend our lives and further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord and remembering also the souls of Gloria and Charles McKinley. May they rest in peace. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. When the hymn starts. In preparation of the altar, hymn 184.
As we offer these gifts, this bread, this wine, may we offer ourselves in loving service as we pray. Gracious God, the suffering and death of Jesus, your only Son, makes us pleasing in your sight. Alone we can do nothing, but through his sacrifice may we receive your love and mercy. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is the joy of our salvation, God of the universe, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ. You said, let there be light. There was light. Your light shines in our darkness. For you, the earth has brought forth life in all its forms. You have created us to hear your word, to do your will, and to be fulfilled in your love. You sent your Son to be for us the way we need to follow and the truth we need to know. His cross has given us strength and freedom to enter by the narrow gate, to choose the path of life, and in these 40 days to share his trials. You sent your Holy Spirit to strengthen and to guide, to warn and to revive your church. Therefore, with all your witnesses, who surround us on every side, countless as heaven's stars, we praise you for our creation and our calling, with loving and with joyful hearts as we sing. Standing or seated, we continue in prayer. 
Blessed are you, most holy in your Son. On that night before he died, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them and said, Drink this. It is my blood of the new covenant shed for you, shed for all to forgive sin. Do this to remember me. Therefore, with this bread and wine, we recall your goodness to us. God of the past and present, we, your people, remember your Son. We thank you for his cross and rising again. We take courage from his ascension. We look for his coming in glory, and in him we give ourselves to you. We celebrate and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that we who receive Christ's body may indeed be the body of Christ, and we who share his cup draw strength from the one true vine. Called to follow Christ, help us to reconcile and unite. Called to suffer, give us hope in our calling. For you, the heavenly one, make all things new. You are the beginning and the end, the last and the first, to whom we bring our songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever Amen We break this bread communion and Christ's body once broken let the church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying if we have died with him we shall live with him If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. God, our help and strength, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. Strengthen our faith that through the death and resurrection of your Son, we may be led to salvation, for he is Lord now and forever. Amen. I would invite you to be seated until a point in the narrative when our Lord reaches the place of the skull. A continuation of the reading of the Gospel of Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. Then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? 
a dispute arose also among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you, just as my father has conferred on me, a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him there. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, be, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. 
Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. Then day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, are you then the son of God? He said to them, you say I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him saying, we found this man perverting our nation forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so? Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who himself was in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been waiting, wanting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, you brought, this man, brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and I have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither was Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, away with this fellow, release Bar Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus.
a great number of the people follow him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man, has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon when the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. Go forth in the name of Christ. <clears throat> 